in my last video, I ran into a major problem where my rotors that I had, which were the Jordan slotted ones, were the incorrect size. It sucks because I spent $80 on those rotors getting the center honed out to my hub size, but they didn't fit still. So now I ordered the right ones and they finally came in. The company's name is JT Outfitters. That is where this brake conversion kit is from. And today we are hopefully going to finish the install on them. One of the biggest downfalls of these is they are not drilled or slotted. They're just standard rotors but that's all that they were able to offer me. You can see the big difference of the Jordan slotted ones and the regular ones. So these are too thick. If you guys are looking for some rotors, um, I'm not sure why these are so dirty. They just need to be like brake cleaned off or whatever, but hit me up. It's super weird because I already installed one of the rotors on this side and you can see it fits. It's on there, but if you listen, I try to turn it, it rubs. If you look right there on the brake pad, you see that fine line all the way around? It's rubbing the brake pad. So what I'm thinking to do is take the brake pads off and shave that right there. Shave it flat on both top and bottom and that should hopefully give me the clearance that I need. The thing that was very scary and I didn't like is how close it is to the pin. You can see it's very close. I posted a picture of me yesterday of the truck. The rotors said that they were delivered but they had not gotten delivered. I was worried that I wasn't gonna be able to complete the truck, you know, this weekend, and I wasn't able to, so. I just think it's very weird that I have to do all these modifications when it didn't list it on the, on the listing, you know? Very weird. There you go. Should fall in place fairly easily. I don't like the design of these calipers and pads, but it's what came in the kit, so we gotta make them work. I was thinking what if I can get a set of 350Z Brembo brakes, rotors and calipers to fit on this, but to find rotors that'll work for that, I don't know if that's even possible. I mean, anything is possible, but that would be a killer brake setup. Tell me not. So now we should have plenty of clearance from the rotor and this pad. I think we're good. Guys, it's so close, it's not even funny. I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now. I'm gonna bleed the brake system, try it out, and just see what happens. But if it rubs too much, then I will have to take it back out. So now I can talk to you guys about the routing of the brake line. I was originally going to put the brake caliper in the back side of the rotor. Again, this kit, you can put it on the top, sides, any side, bottom. It's all personal preference. I was gonna do it in the back, but I decided to do it in the front because Routing the brake line was a lot easier and more comfortable for the brake line, putting it towards the front. So you can see I bent the brake line through here, connected the lines, everything looks nice and clean and the line is not too kinked, stressing, everything is nice and good. The next thing that we need to figure out will be the e-brake, but I will figure that out in a later video. If you guys do not know, I recently did a brake booster eliminator kit install on my Toyota pickup and I installed a Chase Bays kit from a Toyota Supra and I made that work. You can see it makes the engine bay look a lot more clean and sleek. The only thing that I did not like of that kit is it made my brake pedal feel way more stiffer and I had to put way more effort to get, you know, braking power. So I'm hoping that with these disc brakes in the rear, it's gonna make the difference in the braking performance on this truck. I feel like I haven't opened the engine bay in so long. It looks so good, I miss this truck. I got the brakes all bled up with my boy Yondel. We did the manual brake bleeding process. We got all the air out of the lines, well we think we did, but the pedal still feels a little bit loose. It feels very soft. So I'm just gonna put the wheels back on and quick, take it for a quick drive down the yard and just see how it feels. I'm not gonna go on the road because I don't know if the brakes are even gonna work. So we're just gonna go around the yard, feel the brakes and see if they work properly. You can see I got that fresh cut, that boy looking good. I tested the truck out and it is having some major rubbing issues. I took off the wheel again and you can see that the rotor right here is rubbing against the caliper bolt. So I need to take this all back off. I called the company. They told me the best thing they recommended me to do is take the bracket back off 
and drill out the holes a little bit that way the whole thing can move this way and away from the rotor so it's rubbing here and also up here so all I have to do is drill these holes more towards this side that way I can pull this bracket more to the right that'll hopefully give me enough clearance from the rotor to the copper bracket bolts that's the modification that I'm having to do I don't know if you guys are gonna have to do this on your kit the difference between my kit and the kit that they sell straight from let's just put it this way I don't have like the base model kit I have a kit that's like the the better version of the kit so it comes with the nice red powder coated calipers whereas in the regular kit it comes with just standard metal calipers and they do not have the e-brake spring my calipers have the e-brake spring and all that so that's the difference so I don't know if running these it changes the setup a little bit and you have to do these modifications to make this caliper work but I mean apparently you do because that's what I'm having to do according to their website and I called the manufacturer JT Outfitters they told me that everything should bolt up just fine line up perfectly from the kit so I don't know I took the brackets over to the machine shop and I had them drill out these holes with a drill press try to make them look as clean as possible they drilled these out you can see very close to the edge I put this side on already and you can see I have plenty of spacing now I shouldn't have no issues rubbing that pin anymore I got plenty of space you can see where it was rubbing before the brake pad is away from the rotor you can see there's plenty of room there as well so fingers crossed we don't have no more rubbing issues now I just have to re-bleed the system because for some reason the brakes are not breaking but of course I have to put this other side on I probably went a little overboard but it's better safe than sorry so we have plenty of room and they shouldn't touch at all anymore. Same thing as the other side, this side has plenty of room now. It should not rub the rotor. So hopefully we should be good on that. Well, if it's not something, it's something else. One thing after another, keep on running into issues doing this conversion kit. Now I'm having problems bleeding the brakes. If I pump the pedal, it gains pressure. If I let it sit for about five, 10 seconds, press it again, it drops to the floor. So it seems like I still have air in the lines. It's very difficult though, because we already pumped this system five times and it's still not, not going properly. It just doesn't feel right. But once I pump it a few times, then the pressure comes and then it feels good. I'm gonna try to get the air compressor brake bleeder and that way it can just, the vacuum brake bleeder is basically what they call it. I use it on a 350Z whenever I bled the brakes on that. And hopefully that should help me out and get all the air out of the line. So one problem that I did realize that I forgot to correct is my bias valve. On the Chase Base Brake Booster Eliminator Kit, I also installed the bias adjuster valve. With the bias valve, I am able to adjust the brake pressure to the rear brakes, and I had it all the way out on the drums. Now that I had disc, I screwed it all the way back in. I forgot all about that, so if you guys did this, make sure you put this back in. You wanna get the proper pressure that you need to get to the rear, to the rear. Tomorrow. All right, it's currently the next night. I've been out here for a few hours now trying to tackle these brakes. And uh, I'm gonna make this like if it's a scary documentary, so. So, Tina, we were not able to complete this brake job. I am done. I'm gonna try to explain this to you guys as best and easiest as possible. I am stupid. Not that I'm stupid, I just didn't do my research on these calipers. I did a lot of research and I found out that most disc brake conversion kits use GM calipers with the e-brake built on, which is the same exact setup that I have here. And I read to bleed those systems, you have to adjust the e-brake system. My theory is I didn't have any air in the lines. What happened is the spacing from the e-brake, you have to adjust it. If you guys do your research, you'll find out, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to adjust the e-brake knob. That way the piston keeps the pad close to the rotor and it doesn't leave a big gap. Because if you have a gap, then you have to pump the brake to pump the piston out and then it'll make the pad contact the rotor. So what was happening, I had too much of a gap between my pad and rotor so I had to pump the brakes to get the pads to touch the rotor if that makes sense so basically what I did is I adjusted the pads closer to the rotor so all I have to do is one pump and then they'll contact the rotor functioning just like a normal brake system this has just been a nightmare 
been doing a lot of research it's been draining me this is so mentally draining you guys don't see nothing that happens behind the scenes but this is so like it's annoying but i don't know i just it's fun i like doing this what i i asked for this so if you guys want me to explain a little bit more on how to adjust those things in another video let me know down below but if you do some research you can find all the information i just told you and they'll explain to you exactly how you can adjust these brakes it's pretty straightforward but it's just time consuming when you don't have brakes that cooperate like the ones that i have and they send you the wrong ones and they don't work on the freaking truck so now you have to deal with all this crap and be out here late at night and you can't get your truck running. you can't even use your truck you can't go nowhere because your disc brake conversion kit is not installed yet and it's just taking forever i'm gonna stop talking tomorrow i re-bled the system i ended up doing it solo once again I use the snap-on vacuum brake bleeder. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, I used a more powerful compressor and it did the job fine. I bled the system properly. Well, I think I did properly, but I just used a stronger compressor and get a little bit more PSI. It did say that the max PSI was 130 PSI, if I'm not mistaken, but I basically had it right out there and it was able to suck all the fluid out. It was pretty quick, so I had to get some straps to hold the bleeder. And then I came over here to the reservoir and kept filling it up. But I'm pretty confident all the air is out of the lines. It was all solid, so we should be good with that. The pedal feels good. It did not drop all the way back to the floor again, so that's one big plus. Very excited about that. We're going to go for a quick test drive and make sure it's running good and feel the brakes. Hopefully the brakes work the way that they're supposed to. And if they do, then we finally finished. One thing I am concerned about is I was supposed to charge the battery on Tina. I completely forgot to charge the battery. The other day I started it, it started very weak. I'm hoping it starts. Yeah, the fuel pump sounds like it's pretty weak. And, and again, it's, it's about to run out of fuel, so I just hope it doesn't run out of fuel on me. She started up. Oh my God, Tina. Hopefully I can start driving you again. I miss you so much. You guys probably don't even know I miss this truck so much. It's crazy. I want to drive it so bad. Right now it was rolling back because I don't have an e-brake or nothing. Not yet. And um, I hit the brake and it stopped really good. Alright, let's see how she goes. She is cold, so she's gonna be sounding like that for a little bit. The brakes are working. Woo! I started sliding. That might not be a good thing. I mean, it was on the grass. That. That might not be a good thing. You guys can probably see how it starts sliding. I don't know if it slid in the video, but right now it just slid and it got sideways a little bit. The good thing is we got functioning brakes. Now we just gotta get fuel and charge my battery. Oh my God, finally we're done. Finally Tina's back. I forgot that I don't have no e-brake. I need to do that pretty soon. I already ordered the lines for my e-brake. It's all gonna be custom fit, so I couldn't really order a line that's made to fit the GM calibers on the Toyota pickup. I'm gonna have to custom make something. So I ordered a set of lines from Cadillac El Dorado, which is where the calipers are from. If you guys are concerned on how I'm going to make the e-bake work, I will be posting a video on that. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you have not already and hit that notification button so you are notified with all the new content I got coming. I'm so excited. Finally, Tina's back. I can start making more content with her, taking her out. I missed this truck so much and I'm sure you guys did too. The disc conversion kit is finally done and installed. I'll show you guys how it looks in the wheels. And you can just see how good it looks with the black center. I painted all these. If you guys don't remember in the last video, I painted all that up. And it just looks phenomenal. It's exactly what I pictured. It's perfect. Exactly what I wanted. 
The red caliper definitely pops inside the wheel. It just looks great. Man, look at that, beautiful. Now this truck, all it needs is a really good wash. Look at all that dirtiness, it's so dirty. It's been getting dusty. This hood is just so dirty. Look at all that dust, oh my gosh. It's so hard to keep up with everything. And especially all these other cars, you know, we got the Camaro, the, the Skylines and all that, it's just so much. But if you guys have any questions regarding this disc conversion kit, let me know down below in the comments. I would try to reach every single question I possibly can. I try to answer everybody that I can in the comments. I do get a lot of questions, so sometimes it's hard for me to answer everybody, but I will do my best to get to your questions. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing if you have not already. Peace out. And me and Tina hope to see you guys in the next video.